Hi everyone and welcome to our December instructional video for our primary virtual PE sessions. I'm Kirsten French, the Programs Manager of our Sports Adaptations and Camp Spark programs at the Northwest Association for Blind Athletes. Our mission is to provide life-changing opportunities through sports and physical activity for individuals who are blind or visually impaired. And during our time of virtual at-home learning, we are fulfilling our mission in one way through our offering virtual PE. Our primary virtual PE is geared towards students in pre-K through elementary school. This month in December, we will be focusing on dribbling, soccer skills, as well as some other fitness skills. This lesson will focus on three standards, which I'm going to read now. These standards are all the National Shape PE standards. The first is standard one. The physically literate individual demonstrates competency in a variety of motor skills and movements, as well as standard two. The physically literate individual applies knowledge of concepts, principles, strategies, and tactics related to movement and performance. And finally, standard three. The physically literate individual demonstrates the knowledge and skills to achieve and maintain a health enhancing level of physical activity and fitness. We are going to start all of our lessons with the same warm up to keep consistency and help everyone to have an opportunity to develop competency and independence in our warm ups. We're going to first start out with 20 jumping jacks. I'm going to make sure that the space around me that I'm going to use is clear. And I'm going to start by standing up straight and tall. My feet are starting together and my arms are down at my sides. Then I'm going to jump my body out into an X by jumping my feet apart and my arms go up in a giant V so my body is making a large letter X. And then I jump back into my starting position, the letter, like the letter I, where I'm standing up straight and tall, feet are together and hands are down at my sides. And then I jump out into an X again and back to an I. I will do this 20 times total and then we'll pause and go on to, before we go on to our next exercise. At your own pace, you can do 20 jumping jacks now. Once you have done 20 jumping jacks, we are going to go on to 20 ski jumps. For ski jumps, I'm going to start with my feet close together, my elbows are bent and in at my sides, and my hands are in fists like I'm holding ski poles. I then bend my knees and push my hips back like I'm getting ready to sit into, in a chair, and then I'm going to jump left and right. If I would like to jump over a low obstacle to give me a marker to jump back and forth over, I can do that. Or I can choose a line, you can choose something that's high contrast, you can jump onto a rug and off a rug if you would like something tactile, or you can just jump left and right in your own space. As I jump, I'm going to unbend my knees and then jump to the opposite side. For me, I'm going to unbend my knees and jump to the right. And then when I land, I will push my hips back and bend my knees to really cushion my landing and make sure I'm landing on my, the whole, my whole foot. So I have my hips back, knees bent, and then I stand up, jump to the left. And then when I land, my hips go back and knees are bent. And then I'm going to jump left, right, left, right, 20 times total. You can jump 20 times total at your own pace, and then we'll regather and go on to our next exercise. I'm personally getting a little warm right now, so I'm going to take off my sweatshirt before we move on to our next exercise. This is a great, thing to have your body get warm and so that we'll be ready for to move on with our next exercise. Up next we're going to do 10 arm circles 
For arm circles, I stand with my arms out in a T. My feet can be wherever is comfortable. For me, my feet are close together, but they're not touching. My arms are out in a T so that my left fingers are pointing to the left wall. My right fingers are pointing to the right wall. And now I'm going to do 10 arm circles forward by rolling my shoulders forward. My arms are straight. And I'm pretending to draw imaginary circles on the side walls. My left fingertips are drawing a circle on my left wall. My right fingertips are drawing a circle on my right wall. And as I do my 10 arm circles, they'll get progressively larger. You can do 10 arm circles now at your own pace. Once you've done your 10 arm circles forward, reverse and do 10 arm circles backwards, just reversing that motion. Now we're rolling our shoulders backwards, pretending to draw backwards circles on those opposite walls and making them smaller to progressively larger. Once you have drawn, once you've done your 10 arm circles, we're going to work on doing 10 trunk twists. For our trunk twists, I'm going to bend my elbows, my hands are in fists, a similar position to when we were doing our ski jumps, and my feet are gonna stay planted on the floor, so everything from my hips on down through my feet, including my legs, are going to stay stable. This is an exercise that we are working on warming up our trunk or our abdomen, our back, as we rotate back and forth, left and right. So I'm going to rotate my entire upper body to the left so that my sternum, where my ribs connect, turns towards my left wall. Then I turn towards my right wall. I'm going to go left and right, making sure my entire upper body is turning to the left and to the right. My lower body might move just a little bit, but I want to isolate that movement, keep that movement in, the, in my upper body as much as possible. Once you have done 10 at your own pace, we will regather to do our last warm up exercise. All right. This last exercise are called leg overs. For this, I'm going to lay down on the ground and I'm going to lay so that on this video you can see what all my feet are doing. You may not be able to see my head, but I'll describe what my head is doing, but it's not it's just going to be laying now. So for our leg overs, or otherwise known as low twists, I'm going to lay on the ground. I'm laying in a T position, so my arms are out at my sides, wherever's comfortable. My head and my back are flat on the ground. And now I'm going to bring my right leg straight up in the air. And now my right leg comes across my body, so my toes can tap on the ground on my left side, they're going to tap out as far as I, they can tap with my right leg straight, but my back is going to stay pretty flat on the ground. My hips roll off the ground a little bit, but the rest of my back stays flat on the ground. Then my right leg comes straight up in the air and back down to till it's laying next to my left foot. Now my left foot comes straight up in the air across my body, taps on the right side of the ground, back up and then return. Now right leg up, over tap, back up and down. Left leg up, over tap, back up and back down. So it's up, over tap, up, down are our cues. Up, over tap, up, back down. And each time we'll be, we will be reversing we're going left foot, then right foot, left foot, then right foot, until you've done 10 total leg overs, or otherwise known as low twists, until we, until you've done 10 total, and so that would be five on each side. You can do 10 total at your own pace, then we'll stand up and get ready for our fitness activity. We are going to do our fitness activity now. If at any time you feel the need to pause this video to get a little more stretching done or 
need to finish up with an exercise, feel free to do that and then you can continue to play the video when you're ready to rejoin at the video pace. So, as you may have remembered from our October and November lessons, our fitness activities have been centering around acrostic poems that spell out a, a word that's applicable to the month and each letter in that word corresponds to a specific exercise. Since we're in the month of December, which has a lot of holidays, our word for this month is holiday. Each of the letters, each of the exercises that, are, that accompany the letters in our word are an exercise that we've done in the past. So it's a new word, but similar exercises. So first up, we're going to do H high knees. So for my high knees, for this video, I've just turned to, so that my shoulder is facing the video, but you can stay facing whichever way you would like because we're not moving for this exercise. For our high knees, my arms are straight out in front of me with my palms facing the ground. My arms kind of look like they are Frankenstein arms. And now I bring my right knee up towards my right arm, left knee up towards my left arm. If my right knee or my left knee doesn't reach all the way up to my arm, that's okay. I'm not going to lower my arms or bend my body for my knees to reach my arms. They're just not going to reach and that's okay. So right knee up, left knee up. Just bringing our, each of our knees alternatively, one after the other, up towards our chest. As you get comfortable with this, you can add a little bit of speed. Once you've de done 10 total, we'll go on to the next exercise. You can do 10 total now at your own pace. Next up, we have our O overhead tricep extensions. This is a long word for an exercise that's pretty straightforward. For our overhead tricep extensions, I'm standing up straight and tall, similar position that my body was in for our high knees, except this time my hands are pointing straight in the air and my hands are in fists as if I'm punching the ceiling. My arms stay close to my head with my elbows pointing forward. And now I will bend my elbows to bring my fists to the top and touching the top of my back. My elbows are still pointing forward and my elbows are right by the sides of my head. So my elbows aren't pointing out to the sides. They're pointing straight ahead. And then I unbend my arms. Bend my, bend my elbows to touch my back. Un, unbend to point, punch the sky. So touch your back punch the sky, touch your back, punch the sky. And you can do 10 total at your own pace. We're just unbending and bend, bending and unbending our elbows with our arms straight up in the air. Touch our back, punch the sky, back, sky. Once you've done your 10 overhead tricep extensions, we're going to lay on the ground for our L low ab sit-ups. If you joined us for November, you'll notice that these three exercises are three of the four that we did for the word howl in November. So you will lay on your back so that as if you're getting ready for a sit-up, your arms can be wherever is comfortable. My arms are just laying down at my sides. My feet are flat on the floor with my knees pointing up to the sky, and I will roll my knees into my chest, and then bring my feet back down to the ground. Knees to chest, feet to the ground. You are going to do 10 total of these at your own pace, but throughout, while you're doing these, your head, your back, everything is going to remain on the ground. The only thing that's moving are your knees come to your chest, and then feet to the ground. Knees to chest, feet to the ground. All right, you can do 10 total at your own pace. Once you've done your 10 low ab sit-ups, 
The next letter in the word holiday is I, and we are going to do the I inchworm. So for our inchworm, I'm going to back up till I'm standing right up against the wall. This just gives me a good marker for a place to start. You can start wherever is comfortable for you. What you what then then what you're going to do? You're going to bring your hands flat on the ground. If you need to bend your knees to do so, that's okay. Bend with the waist so your feet your hands are on the ground. Then you're going to walk your hands out without moving your feet until you're in a tall plank position with your hands flat on the ground. Your arms are straight. Your wrists are right underneath your right underneath your shoulders, and your back is flat from your head on down to your heels. And once you're in that tall plank position, walk your hands to your feet. And once your hands and feet meet, you can either stand up and turn around and go right back the, to the direction that you came from. Or if you have space to do that, do so. You can stay in, in the bent position and then walk your hands out until you're in the tall plank position. Then walk your feet to your hands. And if, like me, you're now at a wall that you need to turn around, you can turn around and continue your two other inchworms on back to your starting place. We're going to be doing four inchworms total. So if you're in a space that you can do four inchworms total without having to turn around, that's completely fine. You can do your four inchworms total now at your own pace. Once you've done your four inch worms total, our next letter in the word holiday is D, and we will be doing dance for 30 seconds. When I say go, we will dance for 30 seconds, and you can do any dance moves you feel like. You can be as creative as you would like. You can do any moves you would like if you want to run in place, hop on one leg, do the robot. Anything works, anything is fair game. All right. On your mark, get set, go. We're going to dance for 30 seconds. You can be as crazy as you would like. We have 20 seconds left in our dancing. to get exercise and you can move in any way you would like just keeping your body moving. Our second to last letter for the word holiday is the letter A and we're going to be doing our A arm circles. For our arm circles we bring our arms out into a T and we're going to do 10 arm circles forward just as we did in our warm-up. Arms are straight, shoulders roll forward, and they go progressively larger. Once you've done 10 total, do 10 backwards. They should have some good pace to them, but your arms shouldn't be going so fast that, that it's like you're a bird flapping your arms. They should be controlled, but have some good speed. When you've done your 10 arm circles forward and 10 arm circles backwards, we're going to do our last exercise for the letter Y. And this is an exercise called YTWs. But because we're doing the letter Y for holiday, we are only going to do Y. So my body is going to form the letter Y with my hands up in the air in a big V and my feet are together to form the trunk of our Y. And now my, my arms are straight, my fingertips are pointing to the sky, and my palms are facing in front. And now I'm going to pinch my shoulder blades together, unpinch them. Pinch my shoulder blades together, unpinch them. When I pinch my shoulder blades together, my arms move back a little bit just because my arms are connected to my shoulders. 
which are connected to my shoulder blades, but I am not going to be actively throwing my arms backwards and forwards. My arms just move backwards and forwards because they're connected to my shoulders. Once you have done 10 total, I'm just going to switch to give another view. And then one more time. Once you've done 10 total, we've, done, we've spelled the word holiday. This fitness activity is a great activity to go through multiple times. And you can go back on the video a little bit if you, would, if you need some instruction, or you can do these at your own pace to, to get, some, get some exercise while you're at home. The great thing about all these exercises is you can do them anywhere you would like with no equipment. We only used our body the entire time. All right, for the month of December, we are going to be focusing on the skill dribbling for soccer. So we are going to be using our feet. You might be at home and in a place where you don't have a, a ball at home, or maybe you don't have a ball that you are able to you that, ha that has a bell inside. So you can make a ball out of anything you would like. The nice thing about practicing soccer dribbling is the ball that you're making doesn't need to bounce, it doesn't need to return to your hand. So you want it to be round so it can roll okay, but it doesn't have to be the best soccer ball you've ever made. I have a soccer ball in my hands that I've made out of plastic grocery bags. And I put a white bag on the outside so it would be a high contrast since I'm on a fairly dark floor. You can do whatever works best for you. And I just gathered a bunch of bags together, stuffed them in, in one grocery bag, and then tied it up together so it'll stay pretty well. And it's knotted on the bottom so that it'll, it'll stay pretty well. On the inside of the bag, I put a handful of coins so that as I kick my soccer ball, it'll make a little bit of noise. Another great way to make your ball have some noise is to take a plastic Easter egg if you have something, or something else that's a small plastic container and put coins in those. You can do anything that you have at home, any plastic container that you have at home. Maybe you have a, an old plastic medicine bottle that's empty, you're not using anymore. Put some coins in that, or put some rocks in that, or some knots and bolts, or anything else that you're using at home that is safe to use, but will make some noise as it rattles against that container and put that inside your your ball and that'll be a great way to make a rattling ball with just the equipment that you have at home. You could also make a ball, you could take a ball and cover it in a plastic bag and that make, now makes it audible. You could take a something that already naturally makes noise. Maybe you have a dog toy that as you kick it, it squeaks a little bit. That's audible and that's a great way to use. That's a great thing to use. We, if you, ha if you have a color that you see best, maybe it's blue or red or yellow or anything else, try to choose a ball or a bag or a cover that is in that cover, that's in that color to give you the best a ball to use while you're at home. So, I and we are not going to need a target for this exercise. If you want a target to, dribble towards, you can use something that you not, uh, something in your house that naturally makes noise, maybe where you have a heating vent that's making noise, dribble towards that and you can hear the noise and you can dribble towards it. Or maybe you can put music, or is there a TV that's on at your home, or a if you're joining us for a virtual session, dribble towards your computer that you're using because we're going to be talking throughout the entire session. And that's a great way to make an audible target for, if you're, for something to dribble towards. But unlike when we were doing underhand throw, we're not going to be try to, trying to hit anything specifically and aiming at anything for this activity. So if you just want to dribble on, around your space, that works great. For dribbling, I'm going to turn to the side just for a different view for this video. But you can go wherever works best for you. I want to make sure that where I'm dribbling towards has some has a little bit of space between me and something that I'm going to hit instantly. 
You might not have a huge amount of space, but choose somewhere that you can get a couple steps in before you hit something or need to change directions. So right now I'm facing a wall and I know I'll hit it in probably five, four or five dribbles, but I do have some space before I hit it. And to give me a little protection for where, so that I know where the wall is before I come up to it, I'm going to put my hands up in front of my body with my, my elbows are, are bent a little bit, but they're not really close to my body. My hands are out in front of my body, probably six inches to a foot, and my hands are flat up like they, I'm ready to give two high fives. And that way, if I hit a wall or anything, it's going to hit my hands first and not my face. All right, the ball is in front of my feet. When I'm dribbling, I'm going to use either the inside of my foot up where my toe is, the top of my foot called the instep where my shoelaces are, or the outside of my foot up where my toes are. We're not using our heels and we're not using the tip top of our, sh our, of our sh shoe. So because we want to have the most control while we're dribbling. Because, this, because we're going to be focusing on a foundational level of dribbling, we're going to be focusing on using the inside of the, our toe or the top of our laces. Use whichever one you feel comfortable with and feel free to switch between the two. I'm going, so what, it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the ball a little bit closer to one foot versus the other. I'm just going to start with my left foot this time. You can start with either. I'm going to take a little tap. I'm using the inside top, inside toe portion of my shoe with my left foot, take a little tap to the right. So now the ball is right in front of my right foot. And I, after I take that little tap with the ball, with my left foot, I step forward with my left foot. Now I tap the ball with my right foot till the ball is in front of my left foot. Then I step with my right foot. Tap with the left, step with the left, tap with the right, step with the right. The tap, step, tap, step. I have now hit my wall, so I'm going to turn around. And I'm going to take an opportunity to practice dribbling back and forth until I'm comfortable. Because I'm using a ball that is made out of plastic bags or is covered in a plastic bag, it also makes a rattling, like a rustling sound as it slides across the floor. And that's another great audible cue. Your ball might not roll as well as if you were using a standard soccer ball, but this is, this is a great way to practice using the equipment that you have at home. So I'm going to go back doing tap, step, tap, step, tap, step, tap, step, tap, step, until I hit a wall and I'll turn back around. We tap every foot, if I tap with my left foot, I'll step with my left foot. And if I tap with my right foot, I'll step with my right foot. We're going to use this opportunity to go back to just dribble and practice. You can dribble around and then as you get comfortable, you can add a little bit more speed so that it might be each step turns into a little bit of a jog or as you get comfortable it can be a bit of a run. So we'll take a minute to practice and then we'll regather and talk about a few more instructions. Practice using different parts of your foot, using the instep of your foot where your laces are so your toes are pointing towards the ground. And you can also practice using the outside of your foot. If the ball gets away from you, if you can use whichever of those three parts of your foot that we've talked about are closest. You should be able to touch the ball every step that you're taking. So you shouldn't have to take any steps in between each, each step that you take. Each tap that you take, should, so it really should be tap, step, tap, step, not tap, step, step, tap. And that's a way, that's a way that you know when you're dribbling that you're keeping the ball close to you. Our purpose of dribbling when we eventually are playing in a soccer game is to keep the ball close to you so that your opponents aren't able to easily take the ball from you. 
And so our, our dribbling should be close to us. It should be controlled. And because we're moving it down the field, we do want to add some speed, but when we're ready. Once you feel pretty comfortable at dribbling, you can keep practicing. You can build an obstacle course around your house and dribble around it. You can try to see how quickly you can move from one point to the other dribbling. You can go outside and dribble down the sidewalk. You can have someone pretend to be a defender and try to dribble around them. You can do whatever you would like. This is a great skill to just do anytime you have a little bit of free time and dribble around and just get some time to touch the ball, some time to get some, just get, and get some physical activity. Another thing that we do to help us practice with our dribbling before, a lot of times even before we've started dribbling, is our toe taps. And we're going to do this by, I have the ball right in front of my body. I'm going to put my right foot on top of the ball, then back up until it touches the ball, and then left foot on top of the ball, touch the ground. Right foot touch, left foot touch, right foot touch, left foot touch. And these are called toe taps. And as you get comfortable, you can add a little bit of speed if the ball gets away from you, dribble it back till it's right in front of you and continue with your toe taps. This helps you practice locating the ball and getting oriented to where the ball is and having that ball control. And another thing that you could do, another way to practice, is you could pick a space that you're dribbling. So right now I'm dribbling from one wall to the other. And so I start at one wall, I dribble to the other wall. Once I hit the other wall, I might do 10 toe taps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then turn around, dribble back to the other wall. And turn around, do 10 toe taps, and continue back and forth. That's a great way to get some ball, some time on the on some ball handling skills and some time working with dribbling as well as you're getting some good physical activity because you're moving back and forth, your heart rate is increasing. And if any any time you need, you need to take a drink, you're welcome to do so. Now that we've practiced our dribbling, we are going to talk about some different games that we're going to play in our December virtual PE sessions. Our first is the game Red Light, Green Light. This is played like any of our typical Red Light, Green Light games where you are going to be, when someone says green light, you are going to be dribbling around, dribble anywhere in the space that you would like. And then if someone said, and you're, you can dribble as quickly as you would like, and try to move at least at a decent walking pace, all the way up to a run if you are comfortable and are able to do that while keeping control of the ball. And if someone says yellow light, you are going to move really slowly. This is, you're moving at a snail's pace, so it's tap, step, tap, step. We're not moving very fast, and if someone says red light, you're going to stop exactly where you are, put one foot on top of the ball until someone says green light, and then you're going to dribble around. So before we do a practice game, just for the video, we are, we'll go over what each of the colors mean. So red light means stop and put your foot on the ball. Yellow light means go really slowly and green light means go at whatever pace you would like, but at least, but not a stop and not really slow. All right, let's pr play a practice game. So you're gonna start with one foot on top of the ball and green light. Dribble around, dribble as fast as you would like, anywhere you would like in your space. And yellow light, go really slowly. Red light, so you stop and have one foot on top of the ball. And yellow light, ooh, we're going slow this time, we're starting off slow. And red light, so you stop. And green light. And red light. And yellow. 
yellow light. And red light. And so we stop. We'll be playing that game. We'll be playing that game in our virtual sessions for longer than we did in our practice videos, but that gives you an idea of how to play the game with dribbling. You can play this with anybody at home. You can, this is a great way to play. You can even play this game virtually if you would like by doing it over a some virtual meet up with your friends and to just take turns if someone shouts green light, everybody goes as quickly as they would like. And then someone else might shout red light and just taking turns saying the different lights and that's a great way to play and to have fun even when you're apart while playing a game that you can play together. All right. Our last game that we'll be playing during our virtual sessions in December is called a soccer Tabata workout. And so for our Tabata workout, it's, it's similar to a circuit. So we are going to be keeping our heart rate up as we exercise for short bursts of time. So what we are going to do each, we have four different exercises and we will, I'm going to go through each of the four exercises and then we're going to go through an example workout where we do that circuit of four exercises twice through for a set. And then we'll talk about how you can do it at home and how we will be doing it in our virtual PE. So our first is dribbling and we'll be dribbling for one minute. We're not going to go over that since we've just spent a good amount of time talking about dribbling. So but in, this, in this workout where you're dribbling for one minute, you're just going to dribble around your space and making sure that you're dribbling with some speed, so not at our yellow light speed, at least at our green light speed, for one minute. And then our, the next part of our Tabata workout are toe taps, which we also just talked about. So I have the ball right in front of me, and for 20 seconds, we'll tap left foot, right foot on top of the ball. Left foot, right foot. And if the ball gets away from you, just move it back to the place. You go left and right. When you're doing your toe taps, try to keep your head up and your face up as much as possible to be facing whatever wall is in front of you as opposed to facing the ground. That gets our body in a good position for dribbling so that we're not hunched over. Our body is up nice, nice straight and tall. And then we are going to be doing either plank passing or V-sit passing. I'm going to show a, an example of each for 20 seconds. So for our plank passing, we'll be in a plank position. You can either be in an elbow plank position or a tall plank position where your hands are flat on the ground, your arms are straight, your shoulders are above your wrists, your back is flat, and in between your feet are is the ball. And you'll just tap the ball left and right between your toes. And if at any time it the ball gets away, just find, find where it is with one of your feet, and then pass left and right for 20 seconds. The purpose of that is it's a great way to practice passing, but it's also a great ab exercise because whenever you're passing, the foot that you're passing with, so if I'm passing with my right foot, my right foot is off the ground, and I now need to balance my body on just my left foot and both of my hands. I don't have four points of contact on the ground. I now only have three, and I'm switching which are those three points of contact, and I really engage my abs. You wanna keep your back flat and your hips level as much as you can so that your, your hips aren't wiggling back and forth during that exercise. Alternatively, you can do this exercise as a V-sit passing. For this, I'll be sitting on the ground my back is up off of the ground and my right now I have my feet flat on the ground. If you would like some extra stability, you can put your hands flat on the ground behind you or you don't have to. And then while I'm instructing, I'm going to put my hands on the ground. And you can have your feet up off the ground or on the ground. With your feet up off the ground, you are just going to pass the ball left and right between your toes. Left, right, left, right. Trying to keep the rest of your body as stable as possible. If your feet are on the ground, 
same deal, but if your right foot's passing, your right foot's off the ground, then when your left foot passes back, your left foot will be off the ground. Left, right, left, right. And that's a, the way to do our B sit passing. Our last exercise is called our B ups exchange. Long word, but it's a pretty straightforward exercise. I'm going to start laying flat on the ground with my hands are above my head and my feet are down straight below and the ball is in between my feet. Then I bring my hands and my feet straight up in the air and I grab the ball from between my feet with my hands and then I bring my body laying back down on the ground and then I raise my arms and my feet straight up in the air and I put the ball in between my feet again and then back flat on the ground. And we'll do our V ups exchange, going hands to feet, feet to hands, hands to feet, back and forth for 20 seconds. And then we'll go through this circuit twice, take, and then we'll take a one minute break, and then we'll go through it again. So we'll do an example one together where we're going to go through this exercise twice through as a group with time on this video. And then I'll describe a little bit more of ways you can do it at home. And then we'll finish with our cool down. All right, each time through, so it's one minute of dribbling, 20 seconds of the other three exercises. So that's a total of two minutes. So this, this exercise is four minutes of movement total, which is pretty straightforward. All right. We're gonna start on, oh, we're gonna start now. 20 seconds, uh, one minute of dribbling. That's the top of, you can move anywhere you would like. Try to keep your eyes up as you dribble. All right, we've got, we still have 30 seconds of dribbling, friends. You can, you can dribble anywhere you would like. You can even create an obstacle course to dribble around if you would like. Have a little bit of speed. Try to pick a speed that you can go consistently for the entire minute. We've got 15 seconds left of our dribbling. All right, five seconds left of dribbling, and then we'll stop and do toe taps. Three, two, one, 20 seconds of toe taps. We're touching our left foot on top of the ball, then right foot, left foot, right foot. We've got 10 seconds left. Two, one. All right, now we're gonna do our plank passing exchange for 20 seconds, get into our plank position. Make sure your butt, your hips are down. Pass left, right, left, right for 20 seconds. Two, one. All right, now last is our V-ups exchange. Ball starts between my feet, way flat on the ground. Up, grab the ball from my feet to my hands, then back down. Up, get the ball to my feet, then back down. Back up, back down. All right, that was 20 seconds. Now we're back to our one minute of dribbling. This exercise goes pretty quickly, and so that's why we're doing a pretty quick switch between everything. All right, we still have about 25 seconds left of dribbling. One seconds left of dribbling. Got five 
five seconds left of toe taps. Three, two, one. Either plank passing or V-sits. I'm going to do the V-sits this time. Sit on my bottom. My, my hands off the ground, my feet off the ground. I just tap the ball left and right between my feet. For 20 seconds, I've got five seconds left. Three, two, one. Lay back down on the ground. I time my ball between my hands and then I pass it to my feet. Back down, grab the ball. It's in my hands now. Up, down, up, down, and one more, and done. All right, that was our soccer Tabata workout. You can go through that as many times as you would like without a break. We suggest doing it between two or three times and then taking a one minute break because that will give, get your heart rate raised but then you have an opportunity to bring your heart rate down in the rest. Try to take about a one minute break, but if you need a little bit longer, that's fine. But try not to give yourself too much of a break because you wanna still bring, keep your heart rate a little bit raised so that when you get it, it's ready to go back in, ready for the rest of the exercise. In our workouts, we are going to do either one or both of these games each week. And sometimes we'll go through that set once through that set where we've done it two circuits, or we might go through it twice, or maybe one week we'll do it three times. And if you ever need to take a break, you can take a break. And you can go through that set doing sets of two to three times through the circuit as many times as you would like. It's a great way to stay active at home and in a way that's fun and engaging and is a little more engaging, you're doing some core exercise with our V-sits and even our V-ups exchange and our plank passing. And then our toe taps and our dribbling are some cardio exercises. And those are, you're doing some great exercises, but it's a little more fun than just sitting there doing sit-ups for an extended period of time. We end each, uh, each week with our cool down. And our cool down is going to be the same each month and it is, it, are, it is some yoga poses. Yoga is a great way to do some stretching and to bring our heart rate down as we cool down. We're going to start with the triangle pose where my feet are more than shoulder width apart, my hands are down at my sides, and I slide my right hand down my right leg until it goes as far as it goes. And my left arm is straight up in the air with my left fingertips pointing to the sky, my right hand, right now is on my right ankle. It can be on my right shin, on my right ankle, on my right foot, or even all the way down on the ground, however far I personally reach. And keep breathing as you do this exercise. Now we're going to return to center where we're standing up, hands on the outside of our legs, then our left hand slides down the outside of our left leg until it goes as far down as it would like, as you are comfortable with. And then my right arm is straight up in the air with my right fingertips pointing to the sky. We'll take a couple of breaths here. Now we'll stand back up. And I'm going to do my our forward fold. I stand up straight and tall. My feet are close together. My feet can be touching or just a tiny bit apart wherever is comfortable for my body. I breathe in, bring my arms straight up in the air, and then as I breathe out, I push my hips back to try and touch my toes. And each time I breathe in, I release the stretch just a little bit, and then as I breathe out, I try to push my chest further down the, down the ground to try and touch my toes a little bit more. You can give your knees a little bit of a bend to help you with this, but make sure your knees are pretty straight. And if you don't touch your knee, touch your toes, that's okay. You can touch your shins. You can just touch as far down as you would like.
Then you can forward fold, we will stand up. And then I'm going to stand up straight and I'm going to bring my feet a little, a little bit more than shoulder width apart, not very much. And now I'm going to sit my bottom back until my bottom is close to my heels and the backs of my legs are touching. So the back my, my the backs of my thighs are touching the backs of my calves. And I can either put my hands on my thighs, hands on the ground, or hands straight up in the air. My heels might be off of the ground and that's okay. And this is our grasshopper position. We'll take a couple of breaths here. It's like we're crouching as a frog. So a frog position is another name for this position. From here, I'm going to get into tabletop position where I have my knees down on the ground. My toes are rolled under my feet so I can get ready for downward dog. My hands are flat on the ground with my fingers pointing forwards and my shoulders above my wrists. And now I straighten my legs and push my hips up into the air. My head is in between my arms and my back is flat and I make my back flat by pushing my chest to my thighs. I try to bring my heels as close to the ground as I can, but your heels may still be up off the ground and that is plenty okay. Take a couple of breaths here in downward dog. And then from here, we will Go down into cobra pose by I'll put my bring my hips down onto the ground my arms stay straight but my hips on down through my feet so that includes my legs are laying on the ground from my hips on up through my head including my chest my abdomen is up off the ground and is facing the wall in front of me my arms are straight with my shoulders above my wrists so if i need to move my hands back to make sure that my hate my wrists are underneath my shoulders, I can do that. And this is cobra pose and it's a great stretch down our abs, especially after we did a lot of abs in our B ups exchange, our plank passing and our B sits. Take a couple of breaths here. All right, and whenever you're ready, you can release that stretch. And if you would like to stretch anything else, you're welcome to do so. We hope that you can join us in December for our virtual PE sessions, which will be Wednesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. Pacific time on December 2nd, December 9th, and December 16th. Please contact us directly if you have any questions, and we hope to see you there. Have a great day, everyone.